Hi there. Welcome to a, another episode of The Greater Good. I'm Matt Dykes with uh, The Greater Good and Guerrilla Media. And uh, thanks for joining us today. We've got a very special guest on today, uh, but I wanted to welcome you in and thank Tim and Diana for uh, letting us have a, a, have the studio for a little bit so we could do this. And, uh, you know, The Greater Good, if you're not familiar, shame on you, uh, mm -hmm. you've got to go watch our other episodes so you can become more familiar. But if uh, you're not familiar, we are a show that talks about hope, perseverance, and really shining the light on the stories that don't always get told because they're positive in nature. So they don't always have a happy start, but hopefully they have a happy ending. And uh, we want to talk to people about making a difference in the world, how they do that, what they do, and why they do it. And today I'm here with Nikki Steele, and uh, she is with Steele Design Solutions. And uh, we're going to talk to her about her history, her background, um, why she's here, how she got here, and all that good stuff. So, Nikki, welcome hey, to the show. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I am fully caffeinated. <laughs> uh, I think I've probably had too much coffee, but not that that's a possibility. But. Yep. I've got my <laughs> latte going on. And uh, yeah, this is exciting. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. We uh, have been looking forward to it. Um, we, we met... Uh, what was it a couple weeks ago and mm -hmm. uh, just talked a little bit about you know what your plans are and what you've got going on so i thought it was a very interesting story so i really wanted to just kind of have you come in and uh, really kind of talk about what brought you here and um what you do and um why, why you chose that as a profession yeah so i got into um i started my business in 2020 um after uh leaving or i went through a divorce um and so I was working with my ex-husband. We were doing kitchen and bath uh, design and renovation. And so um, as we parted our ways, parted ways, I decided to start a business fo focused on the um, interior design aspects rather than just the renovation and remodeling part of it. So um, my background, I went to the Art Institute when I was younger. I didn't finish because I had my son, my first son, uh, when I was when I was pretty young. But so I ventured into motherhood and stepped away from design. But as um, my child got older, um, I also uh, got sober in that time. And so um, it was just time to create something new, something fresh. And so I decided to open my design business and um, go after go after that, uh, doing the more creative aspects. So uh, the wallpaper, the color theory, the textures, textiles, uh, the more fun things outside of the construction based aspects, even though um, I am more construction based. So that's really helpful. But uh, creation and um, making things beautiful has been, you know, I realized a couple of years ago that that's why I was doing what I was doing was because I was taking something um, that was just ordinary and making it extraordinary. Yeah. And so that's really the passion that fuels what I do. And, um, you know, it's taken me a lot of years to figure that out. But, um, you know, when you have the reins to do, to create something and to really bring it to life and transform it, just as I've transformed myself through my sobriety journey and through um, volunteering at my church or helping others, you know, that's, that's like the foundation of it for me. It's so much more than design. So, well, yeah. And I like what you said. I mean, you know, taking the ordinary and turning it into extraordinary. And yeah. it's not an easy job. It's not as easy as it may <laughs> sound. You know, oh, well, you're an artist. Oh, so your job's not hard. Want to bet? Yeah. Try and be creative once. Then try and do it all the time and always have to be on. It's yeah. very difficult. To replicate it and duplicate that when you are, um, you know, going through turbulence maybe in your own life. Life happens, you know, right. to everybody. So it's definitely a... Um, a practice of mine to stay grounded and focused in that and to create um, peace within my own inner world so that that can flow outside of me. It's like being a channel almost. Yeah. So, so do you have a particular, so is, is it commercial, residential, a little bit of both? So it is a little bit of both. Although I started mostly in residential, the commercial aspects are there as well. I've done work for um, a couple of, you know, medical buildings in the area and other um, like IV spas and, you know, little, little uh, IV treatment centers. Um, well, so <laughs> walk me through your aesthetic. So I, and I know that that's sub very subjective, number one, 
because everybody it's everybody's got their own opinion and their own style how is it that you have that juxtapose where okay here's my aesthetic yeah. and here's how i'm going to work within your style and your design and i'm going to push that envelope for you how do you right. i mean because that's got to be really difficult sometimes okay so this really helped me out i was watching shark tank and mark cuban said the first thing i do is i write on my paper when i'm with a client i write on my notepad listen just the word listen and so that in itself just hearing what the client has to say and really expanding on that and interjecting um, my creativity in a useful way. So practicality is one of my big platforms to stand on if it's functional, practical, and also does it look amazing? And so I really want to bring in um, the client's personality, hear what they have to say, and then also, you know, create, use that as a springboard to create a good looking end product. Um, so, but, you know, I do like it to um, have details that are unusual or that, you know, are just above and beyond rather than the run of the mill cookie cutter design and working with a lot of contractors. I've seen, you know, just a lot of the cookie cutter stuff. And so when I'm working with a client, I really want them to be wowed at the end of it and say, you know, she, she gave us the details that, you know, that we're excited to see. Oh, good. That you don't wow. often come across. Yeah. And sometimes you do have to drag them across the finish line <laughs> and yeah. uh, help them make decisions because it's tough because you're kind of stuck with, once you do it, you're stuck with it for a couple of years. I mean, yep. it, normal people are stuck with it for a couple of years. So yep. If you're well to do, you can change it as often as you want. <laughs> and so those are some of the considerations too, that I take into, take into consideration. Some yeah. of the factors, um, you know, is it a sustainable design um, how does it, you know, work within their family dynamics and um, and what that looks like for either resale value or just moving forward and growing with the design. Um, so, you know, there's a lot to it. And, uh, you know, being mindful of our clients, um, you know, budgets and and moving forward, um, you know, planning for their their future lives with while living with your with your product, essentially. So there's a lot there's a lot to it and, and managing all of that um, yeah. outside of just the end product. You know, it's been, it's been interesting, but I really enjoy, I really enjoy it. So do you have a particular process that you follow or d does that get, depends on the client? It really kind of unfolds organically. I do have, um, you know, a, a process that I do and my applications that keep me organized and my um, creative process, uh, but, you know, it really does unfold organically for everybody. I do like to create mood boards and, you know, floor plans when necessary. And um, but, you know, really getting uh, product in the client's hands and seeing and feeling textures and, and having the color in full saturation for them to experience. Um, so just working, you know, one on one in a, in a personal setting with the client um, it really helps. So, you know, I am there in the home with the selections and you know, revising, um, as we go. And so it, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Revising change orders, change, change orders, orders. <laughs> change order. Mm. Yeah. Those are yeah. always fun. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, those happen, even though that's like, like we a, just decided on this, why are we doing <laughs> this now? Yeah. yeah. So things come up and, and you have to adjust course. And I think that's what is so exciting for me is it keeps me on my toes. Sure. And it's really exciting that way. I don't know if it's, it's more stressful or not. Um, it adds an element of stress, let's just say, but it, it's good stuff. It keeps me going, keeps me moving. And like yourself, you know, we come across different scenarios all the time and that really keeps it fresh for me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm there with you. It, the great thing about our job is because we don't know if we're going to be doing a TV show, a film or um, a commercial or an explainer video or an educational piece from one day to the next, it's something completely different, which allows you to really flex the creativity, right? Yep. Uh, and then there are some days you, you're just, you hit the wall and like, where's my juices? Where's the creative juices going to come from today? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, being able to kind of go outside yourself and look for inspiration um, where maybe there wasn't some before is kind of the fun part of the job for me as well. So yeah, I, get, I get that. I agree with you. And also too, when I'm feeling um, low inspiration or just not motivated, I just, you know, go back to 
self-care and and taking care of you know my own life and so it is sort of a balancing act i often find like the shoemaker's kids don't have shoes well <laughs> yeah everybody <laughs> wants to see my home and i'm like hey i've got three kids and you know it's not what you expect it to be but um so then you know going back to my household and you know doing projects for myself and so you know it is it is a balancing act but um self-care anyways, will give me back that creative juice that I'm looking for. So. Yeah. Work-life balance, being able to step away yeah. so that you can just recharge the batteries a little bit. And oh. sometimes you have to do that in the middle of the day. Sometimes you have to do that Absolutely. in the middle of the night uh, because you can't sleep because you're stressed. <laughs> Five minutes at a time. Right. Yeah. Even. Just, yeah. yeah. Uh, just breathe and, and, and uh, you'll work through it. And that's helped me in my own, you know, recovery journey. And, um, you know, sobriety is just staying for even five minutes at a time and uh you know calming you know the chaos in our minds by getting back to breath and that's a big i'm a big proponent of you know getting back to breath even right now yeah just taking a breath and like you know allowing the nervous system to calm and um you know working with with high you know profile clients in naples you know the pressures um you know, expectation, performance, like that's just always like kind of looming over you. And so the more that we can create a clear channel within ourselves, you know, and, um, and that just, it runs so deep. It goes into self-care and food and your spirituality. And so just for me anyways, I've found that all of these components really have um, given me, you know, a, a much better, better outlook on life and my ability to, to, to take, control of it again. So, and design is also about controlling your elements. Yeah. And very true. Um, and so uh, it's been interesting to dissect my career and, um, and see how it parallels to my life. Do you feel like you're, um, you're exactly where you thought you would be? Uh, definitely not. Definitely not. So, um, I'm a single mom with three kids and, uh, it's, I have goals for the business as well, but um, my my main goal is raising my children uh, to be you know good, that's a good good one. natured people, and so yeah, um, really uh, the business um, was built out of passion, but it was also very practical. I needed to support my kids, and so um, it's the business itself has has you know um, developed in such a way that I'm, I'm not surprised, but I'm excited. I'm excited, uh, with the progress. Um, but the kill, the kids are my main focus. The children are my main focus. So if I'm doing that right, uh, but no, to, back to the question, I don't know that I'm where I want to be or, um, we're going to have to probably cut. No, that's this. okay. But I think, I think really what you, you were saying is that you're not really where you want to be, or you're, you're not where sure that I'd you're be. where you thought you'd be, but you're, really happy with where you are, especially the fact that you have been able to go, look, my kids are priority, the job secondary, but in order to be able to take care of them and provide for them, I, I you know, this is where I'm at. This is what I've got to do. You know, the truth of it is, is that I'm really actually inspired and grateful for where I am. Um, it's not where I thought I'd be, but we all know that life moves and twists in ways that can be unexpected also. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, everything's a blessing. I, I look at everything as a blessing. It's either, um, you know, a lesson to be learned or sure. a redirection, um, hardships anyways. And so expanding on all of that, um, it's, it's robust, it's beautiful, my life. And, uh, and it's, it can be intense, but uh, the children are are my main focus, and we're we're doing it, um, raising conscious individuals. So they're you know they range from thirteen to four. Oh wow! And so I so you're busy. I, yeah, and <laughs> I'm always like toggling between you know all of their needs and then creating something beautiful for clients, and so um, and for myself in that too. But um. That's got to be a time management just So wow. you should see my calendar <laughs> yeah, is sure. all I have to say. The calendar. I have six. <laughs> I always say uh, so much is revealed. <laughs> six calendar. Yeah. I feel that. Share with me a little bit about the, so you, you've mentioned your uh, sobriety story. Um, 
what brought that about? What what made that important? Now, you said that, you know, right when you had your son is when you really mm -hmm. started to do that. So it was you made the, the decision then at that point in time mm -hmm. to get sober. So actually, it wasn't until my son was um, he, I was sober through through my pregnancy, of course. But um, we I was married to his father and we were in a toxic dynamic. Um, the common denominator was drugs and alcohol. And so we brought our baby boy into the world and um, we really wanted to do good by him. And so um, I started my sobriety journey through my pregnancy and into the um, into the baby's, you know, adolescence um, and then inevitably toxicity and having lack of tools to stay sober. I would relapse and um, I would hit a bottom and um, it wasn't until I went to jail that um, I really transformed my that that trans started the transformation of my my thinking, and um, I just remember hitting that bottom and then having time away from my son, that really uh, was the catalyst for my healing, um, or for for my sobriety journey. And so I I was put on um, drug court through Collier County, and so um, drug court really did save my life. Um, and uh, the, the entire program. So then I would go into AA and become, um, you know, a, an active member there with a sponsor and a program. And I worked the 12 steps and um, little by slowly, my life started to get better. And um, I started from, you know, the lowest rung, I think possible. I, I got a job at the dollar store and then the dollar store found out about my record and fired me. <laughs> oh man, that's tough. And so, um, I went and got a job at a restaurant and then a better restaurant and then a nicer, you know, and I did serving for a while. And then I went to fine dining and I just, I saw the spark within myself and in my life and, and, um, what I had to offer. I started to believe in myself and to just gain momentum. And, you know, I guess you could say a mustard seed was planted. There were so yeah. many people on my journey in early sobriety that really loved me when I couldn't love myself. And um, through that, I really gained um, a lot of momentum and inspiration. And um, I would fall down and get back up, beating my head against, you know, some of the same walls. And most of it was just breaking the barriers of integrating back into society and, you know, how do I do this when I have a felony on my record and sure. how do I do this when, you know, all I want to do is just go, you know, escape. And so like really stepping back into life and taking the blinders off was, you know, was shocking at first. And I remember, um, you know, just using the bus system and not having a license or a car and, and slowly I would get those things back. And I, there was one point in the journey where I was walking from um, a bus station to a job interview and it started to rain and it started to rain on me and my dress and my makeup and hair. And I just remember having a coming to God moment where I was just like, what am I doing? I can't believe that this is where my life has, has gotten me. And, um, and I made a vow to myself or maybe it was just God within that just said, this will be the last time that I feel this low and I, never again. And I didn't get the job. And um, I, you know, just continued to to hold on and to, to climb. And I remember there was one point in uh, the journey too early on where I was working at a restaurant and I saw um, an unsavory character from my past in that restaurant. And the only tool that I knew at the time was to go in the bathroom and get on my knees and pray. And like praying was so foreign to me and so outside of my life. And so, but I did that and there was such humility in that, that it literally just brought me to tears and it filled me with the strength despite feeling that way to get up and, you know, lace up my apron again and get out there. And, um, and then it wasn't until I got my son back full custody because that's how God and spirit works in my life is that, um, not only was I given everything I wanted, but I, I was given everything I wanted and then some, and I've just learned that 
it's not easy. It's not easy. I still have days where I go in the bathroom and I cry and I say, God, please take this. Um, but it's so worth it because at the end of every night when I'm tucking my children into bed, you know, that that's the glory right there. I can look up and I can say, thank you. And yeah. then I can go create something awesome. Sure. Absolutely. Because I've done the work and, um, and it's been 10 years of highs and lows to get, you know, to this point in my journey. And so, um, I'm learning along with my children as I tell them that you have everything you need within to do and accomplish anything. And we have it all within. We just have to believe in ourselves and have a love, enough love and nourish, nourishment, spiritual nourishment to to move out in the world and know that. Yeah, and that's, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's really important that it's within. and. You know, when you're down in the depths of despair and, you know, and that's really a question I want to, I want to ask you, that is a tough problem. I mean, you are, your depth of character speaks volumes just to be able to hang, hang in there uh, because so many of us just can't find that spark of light to keep that hope going. What was your spark of light? Was it your, it was your kids that was the spark? Um, I think so. And also, um, I lost my mom when I was 19. Mm. She died from drinking. And um, so I always had this like push pull in my mind. I don't want to be like my mom. And then inevitably I ended up like my mom. Yeah. And so when I started to forgive the people in my life and know that they were only doing the best that they could do with what they had and that I, I, forgiveness and just forgiveness for myself. Um, but that, that was transformational for me is just knowing that we're all just a little damaged and broken sometimes. And, but that doesn't make us invaluable. It right. doesn't make good the, point. That's not the storyline. So we all have hardships. And so, um, I, I don't know, I guess I diverted from the question. No, that's okay. Bit, but no, I mean, you answered it and it's and just my kids. Yeah, yeah. Like seeing, and then I would, I would have another son after I got sober um, with a different individual and, and he inevitably could not stay sober. And so I raised this baby boy, um, by myself, well, with, with my other children, but he's, he's predominantly with me, whereas the others go and see their, their dads. And yeah. so, um, it's, it's been interesting. So there's three of them. And as you know, life would carry me, um, through, you know, they inevitably have three different fathers. And so adjusting course also, and not letting, um, you know, other people weigh us down. And unfortunately, yeah. um, drugs and alcohol have been a common denominator for, for the fathers too. And we're plagued, I feel like, in this generation. I mean, also, if you look ahead and forward and, and behind us, you know, addiction is, is everywhere. And so... Um, oh, yeah, in many different forms. Yeah, it, yeah. it really is. And so, um, and to identify that, like, we're all a little addicted to something and that just manages, it just puts things into perspective for me. Yeah. It, it, it helps me to sharpen my own saw and be mindful and aware of what I'm, what I'm consuming, whether it's media also or music or just my own limiting self beliefs, my own self limiting beliefs or programs of fear and inadequacy. And so, um, rewiring my neural pathways through Thought all processes. the pokey yeah. stuff, oh, yeah. and, you know? Yeah. And it's been all of these modalities that have really helped me expand and just, you know, the power of positivity and manifestation is so real. If you can, if you believe it, you really can achieve it. Yeah. And you know, people have been saying that for years, but until you go through something where you need to hold on to that, um, you know, it just, it, like you said, it gives you a different perspective and, and, you know, it just speaks to, like I said, your strength and, uh, you know, being able to stick to that. And, and I think it's, um, really honorable that you do that, not just for yourself, but for your kids, uh, as a father, as a parent, you know, he's the best thing I ever did in my life. Uh, yeah. he's the best gift, um, you know, besides my savior, you know, he's, 100%. you know, and, um, so you, you want to do right and you want to, you want to help them be better than you were, hopefully. And that's the <laughs> you know? goal. That's the goal is just to sharpen the saw and, yeah. and be aware of like, 
the ancestral stuff too. We all have like, you know, traumas that we've stored in our DNA. I mean, it runs so deep. I'm into so many, like, uh, I don't know, healing modalities that I'm yeah. starting to understand about the subtleties too of like the trauma that we hold in our fascia in our body and in our nervous system. So it's just really expansive. I'm, I'm really excited to, to be here on the journey and, um, and to teach my kids to kids about this too, because if I have the awareness that I'm giving them at their age, I just, I can only imagine. Yeah, no, I mean, and you hope that springboards them that much faster, that much further, you know, you know right. so they have a, a leg up. So I think that's important. How do, how do you, um, how does that translate over into your business and how you treat people Great question. And, and customers? Yeah, um, thanks for highlighting that. So I often use the analogy um, that our lives and the, the depth and the contrast is is like a full masterpiece, a full composure masterpiece. So you have to have the light and the dark. And um, and in treating my clients, um, you know, it's it's a sacred space. So somebody's home or office is an energetic extension of themselves. And so being aware of the subtleties, the the macro and the micro in their lives. And so whether it comes down to lighting or scent or music or audio, like anything, anything that can invoke emotion or um, create a lasting experience for them, like that's, that's important. So um, I think that my, my history and my overall awareness um, really helps, helps me with the clients to hone in on what's going to be, um, you know, the best application for them. So when you go into a client's home, what, I mean, is it different or are you trying to create the same feeling each time? Do you have a goal? Like I want to make this the most peaceful space, or I want to make this the most pleasing to the eye or, I mean, so it really Walk depends on the client. And so back, back to listening to them. And so often also when I'm working with people and I haven't met them in person, I ask them for photos of their family or who will be using the space so that I can connect like with who they are, with their essence. And um, so whether they're a business person or somebody who runs a workout studio or, um, you know, a stay at home mom who needs a peaceful nursery for her newborn, um, you know, really listening to the client and, and determining, you know, their needs, first of all. And how to make that awesome, how to expand on those needs and and make and put your stamp on it. And, um, you know, it's just it's a, it's awesome. There's a lot there's a lot of factors to consider. But um, of course, there's my natural creative expression that comes out differently. But um, I am trying to create that uh, that vibe where you walk into any room and you're like, oh, Nikki Steele did that, you know? Right. And so I haven't refined the signature yet, you know, where you're going to be able to tell uh, right away, like most artists maybe, but um, it's, it's a work in progress. And, uh, but really just, I'm, I'm happy with where I am in terms of providing, um, you know, an aesthetic or an application that is practical and useful um, and, and wows the client. What's your favorite project type? Do you have one or do you just like them all? I really like um, custom cabinetry, any any sort of custom cabinetry that we're building and um, creating. But I also love kids' rooms. So, Well, yeah, um, being a mom, I, I could see that. I love kids' rooms <laughs> and uh, any, any opportunity to have fun and invoke uh, curiosity and exploration, imagination, bright colors, um, a vibrancy. I like a room that's interactive. So I'm really excited. I have a vision to do a kids' room. I had I had bid a couple rooms with a rock wall in mind oh, yeah, like to yeah. climb up the wall, but um, I haven't been able to apply that yet. So um, you know, just an interactive space for children, and um, and I'm doing that in my own house slow and slowly. But uh, I just bought my ex husband out of my property, and I'm moving a lot of oh, energy. Nice. And so I'm excited to um, unveil some of the things within my own circus space that uh, <laughs> we're doing. I'm doing um, a small renovation project there now. And so, you know, we never stop, but um, 
it's inspiring and it's creative. And the kids are now getting to a point where they're able to um, use their own creative genius to help my mission and to help me, which I think teaching your children about industry and, um, and, you know, entrepreneurship is, is really, really the, the forward moving uh, trajectory for us. Um, I was told to go to college and do this and oh, that. Yeah. And I would just beat my head against the textbooks and flunk these classes. And I'm a smart person, but it just, I, I'm that creative that dies in a classroom. And so, um, so really being able to understand that and teach my kids that, you know, life is um, a box of crayons and, and a, a clean slate that we can create on. And so teaching them about everything from, you know, their digital footprint to, you know, finances and entrepreneurship. These are things that nobody had conversations with me about. Sure. And so yeah. um, I'm really excited to, you know, give them a good leg up. So you, so through your work, um, you've, you've done all of these things. Is there one thing that you can recommend to some of our viewers that maybe would help make their space a real unique space for them? Is there something they could focus on? Is there some, uh, is there a puzzle they can go to? Sure. So I guess the one thing that is, um, I think lighting is very important. So having, having proper lighting and good lighting. So having ambient lighting in the background and then having feature lighting, whether it's on artwork or having a little lamp on the, on the table, I really find that that brings in light and more energy and, um, and more focus. So, uh, from a general perspective, I think lighting and also scent, you can't, you can't broadcast the way that something smells, mm. But if your house, whether it's a, an essential oil diffuser or you use a really nice, you know, cleaner and, you know, you have maybe some lemon in there. I don't know. Scent invokes emotion and um, and having that as, um, you know, an olfactory response to the neuro, it's, it's all connected. And so the happier that you feel, like your life will, will flow so much better. So um, I guess... For anyone's space, just you know, good lighting, good scent, good smell, and um, and, and less is more. So no, that's less really is good. really yeah. more. <laughs> yes. The clutter is chaotic I can't, I can't and, do clutter. It yeah. drives me crazy. Unless you're going for a maximalist design. And then <laughs> well, yeah. I want to do color and texture on more color and texture. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm up for that too. I actually that is really something that I have not been able to do, but I really would like to spend some good time with somebody who's um, excited to step out of the box with color and texture and pattern. And um, I follow some of these crazy uh, groups and they're doing some wild things. And I'm, I'm really excited to to put my stamp on Naples even more in Southwest yeah. Florida. Well, and I tell you, you know, color theory, being, being a graphic artist myself and um, editor and, and things, the color theory is so much more than I thought it was. When I started to get in into, I'm like, oh, okay, so it's contrast and it's it's complementary, big deal. Uh, no, it's way more than that. Yeah. And holy cow, there's so much to know, and you you don't have enough time in the day nope. to know everything that you need to know. Uh, so it's an ongoing education, um, but it's fun, and it's. Re I never thought I'd be into colors like that, but yeah. it's cool. It really is cool. Yeah. And, and then you're stepping into more of like the subtleties of life, the the micro, and so then you're starting to recognize undertones in in color and different hues, um, whether they're pulling cool or warm. And so, if you have you know a warm you know, color tone, you probably want to stay with other warm materials or textures because if you're mixing warm and cool, then it really just depends on what you're doing. But yeah, there's, it's, it's amazing. It goes, it runs really deep. <laughs> so a, a little bit down a different path here, I got to ask you this. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being a business owner, we know that uh, we affect our community and we can affect our community, not just by going out and doing our best and having the best follow through and and catering and taking care of our clients. I mean, that's very important. But where do you see uh, yourself as a business getting involved in the community and and help? How do you help the community? Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm working on uh, finding 
good outreach opportunities. So given my past and history with, um, you know, just being a single mom and, and addicted to substances at one point and, and entrepreneurship, there were so many skill sets that I had to go out and learn for myself. And so I'm trying to be nestled, become nestled in a position now with, um, with a, ho- a home that offers um, help to single mothers, young mothers in the area. You guys are familiar, you and Hope. I don't know if we're at liberty to mention. Oh, uh, yeah, the, absolutely. But um, yeah. we've recently Sunlight. connected with Sunlight Home. And um, and if our viewers or listeners aren't familiar, it's a house that helps, um, you know, young single moms uh, right in Golden Gate City who um, don't have the resources uh, to, to do life with their babies. And so I'm really excited to be able to just, um, whether it's, um, just volunteering or mentorship, um, whatever that looks like. And really I let my service work, um, lead me where I need to go, not where I want to go necessarily. And so I'm really just open, um, to go where I need to go right now. But that's my focus is to help other women like myself, um, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, I could have really used good mentorship like this. And so, um, and also volunteering at our church in my youth and family ministries. Um, I, I volunteer with the children at our place of worship and it just gives me so much motivation and, and fuel. And, and also my children make up half of our ministry. <laughs> so, um, I kind of need that to makes, be there yeah. and, um, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, our community, our community is really important to us. And I'm trying to teach my children too that, you know, we can't single-handedly do it alone and asking for help is okay. And if we just raise them that way, I think that it's just going to work out a lot better in the end. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, I got to ask you this question. So money's no object yep. um, and, you know, travel's no object. What yeah. is the one job that it's your dream job uh, to to do with your business? With my business, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So um, that's that that's a little bit of a curveball because <laughs> <if> it, <laughs> I was uh, okay with my business. Um, I'd love to be on HGTV and um, and creating a, a funky uh, maximalist home, maybe in uh, in. Savannah, Georgia or Tennessee oh. or one of those like old, yeah. older homes, oh, um, yeah. colonial style, maybe, or just, um, you know, with a phone booth in it down the hallway. I, I just envision so many cool things, maybe a recording studio, Tennessee, Nashville has some really cool, um, architecture oh, yeah. and that down South feel still too, like that Southern charm, despite us being in Florida, like we've, commercialized and made everything. So that's the crazy I, properties. Yeah, that's the craziest <laughs> thing. I, I come to Florida from Ohio and everybody's like, oh well, Florida's not the South. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah. It is the furthest state south. We are the South like, no, detached from the yeah, South. Completely. <laughs> completely. It was bizarre. Yeah, and it took me a while to wrap my head around. I don't know that I, I fully have yet, but my wife, you know, Hope was like, oh yeah, this, it's not, but we have so many transplants. It's, it's basically a Northern state. It really is. We're such a melting pot. <laughs> yeah. my, my joke is I'm from Naples, so I don't know who I am. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I don't really think I have an accent to speak of anyways. So it's interesting being born and raised here and, um, and seeing, you know, all of the, uh, the way that the, the dynamic has shifted here. So it's bittersweet, but I also sure. love to be a part of the um, the the moving and the and the the trajectory of the the expansion of Naples and and to really hone in on its vibrancy and not focus on you know other elements that you know as a native can can be sad, but uh, I really I really want to start to do some really creative energy work with these with these condos and clients and and they're you know they're a diamond they're they're a diamond in the rough or a few and far between. So like, you're going to, you're not going to have um, that with every client, but sure. a certain special client. Um, so I'm excited for that. Good. Well, we're excited for you. Thank you. So the, um, I have a couple other questions. I, 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 I ask everybody this question, um, being the greater good, we always try and leave it a little bit better than we found it. That's, that's kind of a, a goal here. Yes. How do you hope you leave the world better? 
I just want whoever remembers me or thinks of me to think of the pillar of hope and strength for anyone. Um, yeah, just strength. I think that that's the biggest takeaway within my, the people that know and love me is that Nikki, you're so strong. How do you, you know, stay moving? And because I rely and draw on the strength of spirit to fill me every day and I'm not perfect uh, and I'm just another bozo on the bus, but I think just (laughs) strength and, 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 um, integrity. And my dad passed away in 2021 and that was, that was rocketing for me and my, my children. And, um, but he always told me that integrity is what you do when no one is watching. And, and it's I, very true. I really, um, that's resonated with me. And so just everything is and can be sacred. And so if you treat and leave everything better than the way that you found it, that my life would be well lived if that was the memory. Yeah, that's, a, that's a really good point. And you know, I really appreciate you sharing your story with us today. And you have, you know, I see, I I know that your business is going to just go through the roof because, because of just not just your tenacity, but which is an admirable quality, but I, I just, I love your hope message and, um, and I know you won't quit and, yeah. and really <laughs> so, so often it's, you know, everybody's like, well, what's the secret sauce? I'm like, well, I just didn't quit. I just kept going. You look at yourself in (laughs) the mirror and you tell yourself that you are a warrior and that you have everything you need within. And even if you don't believe it, you still show up in the mirror every day for yourself. That's right. And everything else flows outward from there. And I've literally had to just give myself pep talks. You're a badass. You're a warrior. That's right. And, and, And wear that armor of God. And go out and do your biddings and doing the next right thing in all of it, integrity and all. And, and, you know, and when you screw up, you screw up because you're a human. Sure. And you make it right and you do your best to make it right. That's a really good point. Yeah. I think a lot of people need to hear that. And it's okay to, it's okay to make that mistake as long as you, Absolutely. you do take the step to, Hey, we got to correct this. It's on me. My bad. Lots you know? of humility, just <laughs> cleansing yeah. my spirit with humility yeah. and love. And that's how I can show up. And I mean, I've been so embarrassed and, you know, fallen down several times in business and made a fool of myself. And then, you know, you climb up and dust dust yourself off and pick your boot, pull your bootstraps back up and, and you show up again. And that that really builds confidence in people and, and that tenacity and that, you know, inability to quit. So, yeah, that's, that's a really good point. Inability to quit. I like that. Yeah, Yeah, certainly. Thank you. You know, that's, uh, that's really the most important part. And like you said, you know, we got to get up, we got to show up and, you know, things tend to work out if they never work out, if you don't show up and you got, and who better to show up for than yourself? That's right. And we were having that conversation when I met you in hope at your house is just 90% of it showing up and Mm -hmm. suiting up. That's something I learned in recovery, early days, show up and suit up and act as if That's right. the body and the mind will follow. That's been a huge thing for me to hold on to is to bring the body and the mind will follow through that yeah. repetition and showing up. So uh, how can people get in touch? So who's your ideal client and um, how can they find you? Okay. So my ideal client is anyone that is going through a renovation or a remodel that wants to curate an intentional, well thought out design that's unique to them. And that can look uh, like a, a homeowner that lives in a single family home or at a condominium or a business owner that wants to invigorate their uh, their business place. And uh, how they can get a hold of me is um, they can visit my website at steeldesignsolutions.net. It's currently under uh, construction, yet I have um, a a genius uh, SEO guy working on it now, Brad Stevens. I'm going to give him a shout out. Good deal. So he's a local that everybody, a lot of people know and love. Um, and then uh, they can get a hold of me uh, via email if you want to send me a direct message. If anybody is um, needing help or just an ear or somebody to uh, provide an awesome design experience, it's um, steeldesignsolutions at gmail.com. And it's S T E E L E design, D E S I G N solutions with an S at the end, S O L U T I O N S at gmail.com. 
All right. Well, and I will I will put that on the screen. I promise. I promise. <laughs> so that way you'll be able to see all that. Um, well, I can't thank you enough. Perfect. This has been great. Yeah. I really enjoyed uh, talking with you and getting to know you better. And and really, I, I'm just grateful that you you uh, shared your story with us because yeah. it's special. Thank you, Matt and Hope, for having me and um, the greater good. I love everything that you guys are doing, and I'm excited to work with you in the future. Definitely. Yeah, very excited. Well, so you got make sure that you check out Nikki's website and email her with any questions that you have. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, Thank you. We, uh, so I've got a couple of things I want to uh, tell you on here. Uh, so, but you can go to my website, which is uh, gorillamedia.tv. And uh, we have a page, a link at the top of the page that is the greater good. So go there. You can check out our latest episodes. You can find out what types of projects we're working on. Uh, you can, you're going to be able to find this show and other things there on the website, but also on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Pandora, Facebook, LinkedIn, everywhere we can put this, we're going to put it there. Uh, so it's easy for you to find it. You know, I just want to leave you with this thought like we always do. Uh, how are you going to work uh, for the greater good today? Um, whatever it is that you do, be sure you leave it better than you found it, okay? Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.